Marks and District Council. Uh, we are recording. <laughs> the, the point of that is we will we will be posting this presentation this evening on our web page. So if any other candidates want to um, get the information. So um, tonight um, we've got a couple of presentations for you. One is from myself, just going through the pre-election report that will be produced in two weeks, less than two weeks now. Um, again, well, I'll give you a bit of a summary of that. And then I'll hand over to probably the most interesting parts of the evening, to Warwick Lamb. Um, he's our uh, chief electoral officer. And so he's gonna run through a bit of the election process and the candidate um, information that you'll need if, if you um, choose to stand. So, forward. so um, without any further ado, we've got a couple of people online but um, we'll, we'll push on. So, is that? An overview. There we go. So, uh, we'll, we'll start. Overview of the Local Government Act. Um, I'm so going to on the bike, yeah. <laughs> No, it's not really on the bike. <laughs> but yeah, that is the skate park. So, um, the... Um, the pre-election report is a, is a document that's a statutory requirement, came in about a decade ago. It's really, um, the aim of it is to promote um, discussion ahead of the local election to um, make help make informed decisions for both the candidates and, and the voters. Um, and it'll be circulated and ready, released on our website in two weeks' time, as I said. Um, that will include all our up to, uh, latest um, up financial information um, that will be that has been prepared at the moment for the last financial year. Um, the, the report is a, a summary. It talks about basically what council is and what it, what it what it does. <laughs> the two parts of it is the governance, that's the mayor and the councillors, and the organisation, which is the chief executive and all the staff. It it forms it talks a little bit about the decision making process. Um, through the council meetings information um, and, and the committee structure. Talks a little bit about um, um, the, the staff, what the council is, um, parts of what we do and um, different regulatory responsibilities that the council and the council laws have in that process. Uh, it also talks about what we've delivered um, up to date, up to now, in the last three years, since the last pre-election report was produced. And for us, it's uh, the skate park, we've got a, a bridge, which is almost completed, Castle Point toilets, the library learning centre. We've also had um, different uh, um, community events over those three years. Um, Matariki, Wifest, um, and our, sorry, and our climate, climate action plan, um, has been developed in that time as well. Um, we've we had a, a lot of challenges. The last three years has been dominated by COVID. Everyone knows that. We, we are looking at moving forward. It has been a, a tough. Um, it's been a tough tri uh, triennium, to be honest. Uh, but the upcoming challenges haven't gone away, and, and they've got more focused. There's the climate change issue that um, becomes more and more prevalent, uh, more and more uh, visible all the time. <coughs> Housing issues, water resilience, um, challenges that the Wairapa has, um, and, and the growth that, that we're experiencing and how best to manage that. So those um, issues are all covered in the pre-election report. Climate change is, is really focusing on um, the, the increased frequency and actually the impacts that it's going to have on our infrastructure. And one of the key areas that we've got in the next short term is the Matacona um, road area. So um, that, that is probably our most vulnerable road or vulnerable area to climate change. But, but there's a number of other areas that um, we will be uh, discussing and sea level rise and managed retreat, those are all going to be um, 
topics that will be discussed frequently in, in our council coming up. Um, and But also our climate mitigation um, actions that we're, we're planning to implement or we are implementing and we're planning to deliver on. So the other challenge I raised was housing, um, affordability of housing in New Zealand is a challenge and specifically in Masterton. We, we don't have a Kainga or a presence here in the district. So we don't have that central government intervention. Um, we've, we've worked hard at trying to get that and, and it's still a work in progress. And we're also not eligible for government income subsidies. So those are the challenges that we have in that space we need to confront. Water resilience, again, climate change, drought, um, changing regulations and uh, protecting our waterways. Um, all three councils have some challenges in the wire up there and Marston's no different. And, and finally, managing growth. Uh, it was only a decade ago that we were, were thinking of um, zero growth in this area. We were worried that, that we'd have negative growth and, and the consequences of that. You know, it, it's been a decade of real change for the wire wrapper. Um, and so managing the growth we have um, is, is a key part of what um, we have to look at doing. Um, so, so those are the, the hot topics coming up in the in the um, the next triennium. It's three waters reform. Um, I'm sure everyone's. If you just have to read a paper, you, you'll know that that's a, a juggernaut. The government has um, has started rolling. Have will have huge implications for <coughs> all councils because effectively a third of their business will be taken away, a third of their operation will be taken away into these um, new entities. There is a future of a future review, a review of future of government, this, this government set in place. They've, they've established a commission, I think it is, um, to, to make some recommendations on where local government should go. But those recommendations um, could be very significant um, in the next three to five, three to five years, on how we deal with how we relate to our community, um, and what responsibilities local government have, so they will be again a key talking point of the next council. Um, a, a report is going to be released two days or three days after the election, which is good timing, um, with for for um, consideration by the new council. Uh, we've got Resource Management Act reforms that are um, in train now. Uh, um, that very much is a focus on um, two new bills, which effectively um, regionalise um, a lot of decision making. Um, so a lot of decision making will be going over the hill. And some of those um, key documents will have a regional plan as opposed to um, smaller district plans. Um, that's the proposal. We will need to see where those land. And again, the next three years, um, those changes are going to bed in and we'll have to react to them and, and manage how we approach them. Affordability never goes away. It's always a, a key focus for the, for the council and the staff here. It's, it is just the reality. Um, we can't, um, can't do everything we'd like to. Um, so we have to make some hard calls. And um, the regional work program, again, that's a, um, a series, a chunk of work that we've got that we are working on, on regional spatial plans, um, regional economic plans. We are very much part of the region. When I say region, it's the wider Wellington region. So, so a lot of that work is, is ongoing and it, it will land in the next three years. Um, yeah, sorry, I didn't realize we've got... Um, so there's a summary there of, of what the Three Waters um, Bill is entailing. And um, really around, we're going to, the, the, we don't have the option of opting out as we did a year ago. It, it's going to be forced upon us. Um, and how we react to that and how, the, how we manage the transition uh, over the next two years is, is, um, will tell a lot on how that Three Waters lands. 
future review of local government. I, I, again, I talked there that the report's coming out. Resource management reforms um, and uh, affordability. Is the resource management reforms, yeah. is that, are you talking about the NPS, the national policy? No, no, this is the, the two bills for the mm -hmm. Urban Built Environment Act, mm -hmm. and then the, it's the rural, it's the, um, yeah, <laughs> there's an Urban Built Environment Act, which will control how, um, urban planning is done or urban development is done and then there'll be another environment bill which controls how the rest of it. So that's the proposal at the moment. Okay. And those acts are still being developed and still being worked through. There's things like density. Those those will be things like density, but there also there are NPS which have already been landed on mm. ground density of housing mm. and um, increased um, Building capacity and mm -hmm. things like that. So, so this is already a work in progress, if you like. Um, again, there's, I've talked a little bit about those different key parts of it. Um, also, the, the, the current council has, has set up a number of major projects that are um, in different areas of um, different parts of progress. Um, those are still planned in our long-term plan, but, but how we actually land all those is, is will be very much controlled by the next council. Top one, civic facility. I think if you've read the papers, you'll know a bit of background <coughs> there. The Marsden revamp, there is very much a, uh, an intention to um, improve the CBD. There's a 12-year program um, being developed to, to do that. That kicks off in this next triennium, as long as um, everyone supports the next direction. And, and it is a 10 year, pro 12 year program of um, improving, first of all, the CBD, but also the entrance ways. That's, that's a, a, a work in progress. We've got the additional housing, uh, Panama Village, that we're, we're uh, looking at um, converting, or adapting, or getting that land into um, social housing. Developing the Hood Aerodrome, it's around widening the runway and actually um, installing um, runway safety zones at both ends of the runway so that the planes can land with all this runway safety zone. And um, the Colombo Road Bridge, currently it's a one-way bridge. It's been affected by the um, underscour at um, Wapo. So that, that bridge is going to be renewed in, in the next... Um, well, we're starting work this summer on that. Um, there's a lot in that, a lot of challenges in that, so I don't want to um, put you off or anything, but um, there's a whole lot of other things too. That, that <coughs> this, there is the opportunity to really shape the future of Marston, and that's what, what you're here for. A whole lot of um, Headlines I'd like to see put up there. Um, and actually, what the stories are under this is going to be what you guys um, help shape and with in conjunction with the staff. I'd, I'd like to see that headline in a, in a couple of years. Um, I'd like to see that one as well. There's some real challenges on delivering that. Um, continuing our climate change adaptation work, we'd like to see that occur. The story has to be written under there. Um, Post-treaty settlements, stronger relationships. That's that's a real key that I'd like to see as well. These are my personal views, but <laughs> council rates remain affordable. That would be a nice headline to see. I don't know if we'll ever see it. But um, yeah, Mayor welcomes first village, first family into the Panama village. Um, Is that the end of it? Or, I don't know. Yeah, councillors and mayor at the town centre revamp opening. It's a, a, a challenging. Next, next one. Oh, yeah. Well, if we go back, library, civic centre, that work, completion. And also the last one here is my personal. Marsh is officially confirmed as a great place to live. 
So that's sort of um, that's that's why I'm here doing this job. Um, but it is very much a team effort. I've always seen that between both the, the councillors and um, and the staff. Um, and we've we got a, a real unique opportunity as Lynn is standing down that um, there will be real change coming up, and we'll see where that leads up. So that was my presentation. I'll give you over to the hard board. Um, I noticed that you didn't um, mention the um, waste wastewater on the east side, at, just up before the bridge. Yep. That didn't come up at the end. Is that something that will be looked after by the three waters? Well, for the next two years, we'll be doing some investment there because we, we've got to. But yes, ultimately, that will be transferred to the new water entity, that whole issue. But that doesn't mean we haven't got things to do in the meantime. Yeah. So I'll hand over to Warwick and then we can perhaps have questions after that. Thanks, David. <clears throat> well, I thank you. David, thank you for coming along tonight. My name is Warwick, Warwick Lamb. We're for coming for elections.com. I'm a councillor's election officer. <coughs> I've got uh, about 50 slides to go through, but don't worry, it's not going to take too long. It takes about an hour to skip through those, uh, maybe with a few questions in between. I'm not going to read every line on every slide. We'll be here all night if we do that. Some of them will take a couple of seconds, some of them I'll go off a little bit. We've um, been doing this a long time. Actually, let's talk about it today. Um, we've been doing council elections. 1986. So was that 36 years? Trying to be a bit old. Uh, so I've been around the block, seen lots of things, seen lots of candidates, booked a lot of people, which means I've got a pretty good, pretty active bullshit radar. <laughs> okay. So when I deal with candidates, I want people to be straight up, because you can be a straight bat back. My job's all about keeping things at a level playing field for everyone. Right here. <clears throat> Got a couple of screens. I always get confused here as to which one I should be looking at. But I'll give it a go. So this is me. I live in Tauranga. Our office is in Christchurch. Uh, we work for lots of councils. 45 councils, 39 that were EO4 plus six regional councils. And we do the vote process for seven others. Those are all the councils that I'm elected officer for. Processing Centre in Christchurch, where all the voting papers for my councils go to about 725,000. We do lots of elections all the time. Put about 45 elections on the go at the moment, not including council ones. Most of those are online. Councils are our only election we do that doesn't have an online component, postal only. <laughs> Some of you here have heard me hit the spiel before, so apologies for that, but um, I'll try and keep it a little bit entertaining. I am a bit old school. Uh, I'm not very PC, um, and my language is pretty polite. It is what it is. So, <coughs> so chocolate fish here. I've got a chocolate fish for anyone who can tell me what I've got wrong on that slide. A chocolate fish for me. All right, got the same photo twice. Anyway, what's like we're going all about? As David said, he talked about before, it is a complex business, lots of legislation. <coughs> These are things that um, a elected member on the council looks after. Does <clears throat> all these things. David talked about his prediction report a lot about the long term plan and all those items that are coming up. The council has to think about over the next three, five to 10 years. Looks like we've got a lot of things going on, which is great. Any questions about that? Common sense, high level stuff. If anything, I think this is the actual key slide that you should read carefully 
tonight. And the first five words are probably the most important because it is a big deal. Standing for council, being on council is not a five minute job. It's, it is a big deal and it takes quite a lot of time. So please don't turn up on the first day once you're elected and think, oh yeah, sweet, I can handle that, won't take too long, I can do it around with what else I'm doing. Hard to do. You really are the eyes and ears of the district. And in the Camden Handbook, there's a couple pages about that. I think I get some of <coughs> presentation is that I put people off by talking about how big a deal it is being a member. But my view is you better to be forewarned and forearmed. Make sure you read this stuff and get your head around the commitment that's involved. These are some of the key things that an elected member does. High level governance versus management. Here's the man who's been managing. Here's the elected members that are doing governance. Remembering that the council only has one employee to be back see. They have been employees all the rest of the staff. In the Canada Handbook, there's a page about all of these things. Some of the key competencies that elected members perhaps should have. People skills, <coughs> very important. Lots of listening, lots of talking, lots of hearing what the community wants. That's public speaking. You haven't done much public speaking before you're elected member, you soon will. Around the council table, going to events on behalf of council, talking to people, getting up around the council table, convincing your other elected members of what you might think and where you think they should head. Quite a bit of public speaking. Seeing the last one there is really quite an important one. Councillors think district wide about things. Not necessarily about your little patch, <coughs> we suburb thinking district wide what's best for the whole community. There is a code of conduct that the new council will consider heard every time in the first meeting, which is around how elected members relate to each other. My great dramas, but you do have to think about that at the start. So, how long does it take? People before say it is a big deal. Time wise, look at that, lots of meetings. 68, in the last 12 months, what's that, more than one a week? During annual plan time, maybe 40 hours a week for two or three weeks. That's a month. Sometimes one day a week. Sometimes three days a week. Hard to do around a full time job or another job. You got some flexibility? Sure. No worries. But lots of things to think about. The mayor, pretty much, full time job. Councillors, 20 to 25 hours a week. As I say, sometimes more than that. David, you got any comments down there? You agree with that? Yeah, yeah. And with the reduced number of councillors um, that will be in the new. Um, triennium, um, that workload will only be higher um, as those roles will, will need to be spread out and um, meetings and will be, you know, had to be shared amongst a smaller number. Um, then we've put down there the expectation um, is at the moment that our councils are expected to make Wednesdays free for their meeting, for um, meetings every Wednesday. Um, and Make other, but we would we would stress that if, if that's the, the new council want to follow that same precedent, that would be easily um, a requirement to, to, to commit that day. Um, and also, the reading of agendas, reading reports, there's lots and lots of stuff to read. You need to be able to make time for that, and there will be uh, meetings on other days that you'll need to attend as well. Um, Really, um, yeah, it, it's it's it is. A, a, and if you've talked to fellow councillors, that you hear that it is those sort of hours that you need to put in. Um, and yeah, 
So are the agendas, um, are they hard copy or are they electronic? We have electronic agendas. <coughs> so every council has got a laptop or an iPad or something? That's right. I think we get a hard copy if they read one. That's right. A couple hundred pages this time? We try not to get a couple of hundred pages, but yeah, often 150 um, is not uncommon. How long would it take to read an agenda and normal reports? I don't Three, know. Four hours? That's right. Yeah, it would be. It would be that. You've got to read it twice. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like reading a 250 page book that you're enjoying. It's <laughs> 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 so sort of reading it twice. It's um, very informative <laughs> and well written. <laughs> it's written, but yeah. it's no job. Yeah. The first time you read it, and then the second time you read it and highlight the bits that are relevant. Mm. You know, mm. you don't get it all on the first time. And if you pick up a few typos, the first person that picks up typos gets a follow on from Harriet. Yes, yeah. <laughs> There's only one person that picks up the typos. All right. Okay. So what, what, what would a Wednesday look like? So, what time do we start and what time do we finish? Um, usually, typically, it would be um, a one o'clock start and the four or five o'clock finish. However, we have when when the workload's on, especially around long term planning, um, we've started at 10, 9 or ten in the morning and gone right through the whole day. Um, the reason we pick Wednesdays, and, well, again, this was the previous council. The new council can do whatever it wants, but um, it, it, it it does mean that people know that they've got a commitment mm -hmm. and they have to make that those days free. And that was the idea. Um, we, we haven't got had meetings at night. Um, that's another option, but yeah, we'll find it everyone falls over if we stay up until 11 o'clock at night. But but those are the sort of decisions that new council will be able to make. But it doesn't get away from the, the, the time commitment that we need to do. I think it's important to stress, though, whilst you're on council, you also appoint to other committees, mm -hmm. which you're representative for council, like um, you could be on the um, road, road trails or the parks and reserves or the Friends of the Park or the Port Aerodrome. So your core function is council, but every councillor has other committees and they don't meet on a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. But we we do try to if, if there's a limited number of councillors, we try to make it suit the councillors. Yeah, um, Wednesday could be workshops, training, council mm -hmm. meetings, mm -hmm. strategy meetings. So the council core functions tend to happen on a Wednesday, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. But if you're working with other community groups, throw that out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's the remuneration there. Uh, was it? South Y last night, one of the elected members said that her husband had made her go through and work out what the hourly rate would be based on the council fee for how many hours it is, and she reckoned it was about 50 cents an hour. That's what it is. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's the minimum base um, for a councillor and the mayor. Although, as David said, changing numbers after the election. Base will probably be about 50. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, as a lecture officer, um, as I said before, my role is about level playing field bureau, the legislation to deal with, like a lecture lab, pretty prescriptive, black and white, sometimes shades of grey. But what I don't do is worry about or deal with what you as candidates might say or do, say about each other. I don't care what happens in the political realm in the campaigning sense. Um, it's outside my sphere of caring. If you slag each other off, I think well, Mr. Trump does slag everyone off. Thank you. These are the key dates. Key key dates. Tomorrow, start of the three month election period when you have to record your campaign expenditure. And when signs can go up, I'm like, well, can't blame. The elephant in the room is the eagle, giving me a hard time at the moment. You might be asking me, what's all that about? 
Short answer, Wellington's audience policy says 27th of August, and the science can go up. He's got this wacky great big yellow trying to build it up. <laughs> but the council's audience policy is 16 years old. It was written before the days of electronic billboards, and so it doesn't mention electronic billboards. It mentions hoardings being static signs held up by the of wood. Not the electronic things on the side of buildings. So <coughs> I said to him, you know, veteran sign on the building, is it a hoarding? Same content as well, yeah. Perhaps you'd like to take it down, please, Paul. And he said, no, you got it wrong. And double down. A couple of words of old, triple down is what it is. Stay up. And can we make them take it down? No. Is it enforceable? No. Does council need to review it? Probably. Every council's election to witness policy is different, time frames are different, dates are different. It is what it is. That's the story of Mr. Eagle and his son. So, these are the positions up for election for one and three. Did we change? And then the Community Trust, Trust and Trust, Trimble Foundation, and GW. Okay, and then alphabetical order of candidate names, except for GW. It's actually quite unusual. Most councils, 73% of councils are random order. This is where this doesn't end up. But, um, you definitely been one of those. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, is there eight councils for the last term? Yeah. Why are, why are they all from the historical center? But the elections are the same time? Yeah. So, so Master has been unique in this, as all these different other, these are three elections at the same time. Most councils don't get that, but there's what there's in this community. Thank you very drum, please. Do you explain in your presentation about the Māori electoral roll and the, okay. One other question is, uh, so the South Wairarapa and Kajadin is going to be, Elected at the same time as well, or is it all going the same? Yeah. Right. So, all elections across country are all at the same time. Yeah. All those same dates are all the same. Mm -hmm. the, the hoarding spot is slightly different, so the dates and signs go up are different. Mm -hmm. So, you, you drive them around here and you'll see some places have signs, some places don't. No, that is what it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If someone could come up with a national policy for signs, that would be great. You want volunteering? Not me. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> nominations open next Friday, close 12th of August, 12 o'clock, not 12 o'clock, and leave putting your nominations in for the last minute. Why? If you bring your nomination in the last morning and give it to us at 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and there's something wrong, you haven't got time to get it fixed by midday, you're not a candidate. Okay? Particularly with the money board this time, I think there'll be lots of interest in that. I encourage all candidates to get in early, make sure that your nominator and seconder are on the roll at the right address, and we can identify them, verify them, and sort them out. Want all your nomination documents in together, not piecemeal. And it's set profile on the first day, and the photo a week later, and your nomination photo a week after. Get everything in at the same time. So, nomination photo, profile, photo. Evidence is uncensorship, turn to the bottom. What do we get? Can be done electronically. Most candidates will do it electronically. Last time it was about 70%. It'll be higher this time. Scan it all at home. Catch your word document profile. Send it all in to Harriet. Harriet's email address. We'll bring it in to the council in person. If you're paying your deposit online, which we encourage, you can turn your payment into a PDF of the transaction receipt at the time you pay it, or you can take a snapshot on your phone, photo, 
just make sure you attach it to the email you're sending so that we can track that $200. It's not valid till that $20 is accepted. Okay. The day before I bring it in. <coughs> I'll just when you bring it in, if you send the email, it's got all those documents attached. Evidence of New Zealand citizenship. Passport, birth certificate, certification letter. Remember that the nomination document is a public document. Anyone can come along. So the details of you and your nominator and sending it and your address details are in the public domain. Make sure you let your nominator and seconder know that that's the deal. No surprises. After the close of nominations, we take the candidate contact details, put them on council's website so the media or anyone can contact the candidates. If you don't want some of your contact details to be in the public domain, you can redact them, which will let Harriet know at the time that you put your nomination in. That's the case. Otherwise, they'll go up on the web and it is what it is. Can use your commonly used name on the voting paper. Edward, Ted, and we've got a candidate in Rope who whose nickname is Rabbit. He has Rabbit on the voting paper. Is that too long, isn't it? But you can't have your title or your degree or you know, NZ or you know, all those things. And on the voting paper, you can have your own profile statement. And you can have what's called a party affiliation. I'll show you an example of a short. It's not really party affiliation, it's more these days a slogan or a tagline. On the nomination paper, you do have to state if you are standing in any other elections. If you're standing for the mayor and the council. On each nomination paper, you've got to say you're standing in the other. Because that gets printed at the top of your profile statement in the book that we send out to people. Along with the sentence that says, My principal place of residence is within Master Or well, not. You have to be the Master Tim. You can't stand in Master Tim. I think the memory here we had, I think by last time, we stood for the mural team in all three councils. Okay, cool. Well, that time. You can well stand here, but not just as long as your nominator and seconder are on the rock. Those two things, the which is you're standing in, in residence, is not part of the 150 weeks. So there is voting paper. It's a few years old, but it's not the reason why that's the case. Let me show you this one here. You can see the name, surname, first name, and underneath this little affiliation. Quite a variation of ones. More democracy, less bureaucracy. That's a great idea. Independent, yes. don't have to have anything. Community, focused, leadership. Effectiveness, efficiency, growth. Mm, great. My favorite real change in TCC guaranteed. Little did we know. Yes, there is real change in TCC. Commissioners, no council. So there's the nomination paper. The copies of the table over there. Uh, make sure you grab it. There you go. On the back side, key section is a bit about um, banking details and how to pay you kind of dollar deposit. And you can see you can see on this over the track. Filling in these nomination papers, you know, it's not the easiest thing in the world. They are a bit of a mission. Got to give us other documents right. Please don't hesitate to ask. Harriet and my job is to make it as easy as possible for you guys to be candidates. Might look pretty daunting. Come around, right, we'll help you out. Um, if you've got any questions, send me out. But don't leave until the last one. Um. I see a payment for payment on new funding. Yep. So you pay a $200 deposit. If you get, with the, after the election, you get more than 25% votes of the lowest successful person in that election. 
then you get your 200 dollars deposit back if you complete the candy expense return. So we put the details on there so we pay it back here later. Keep your first person asked that question actually. You didn't have any questions on it. As a result, I'm giving you trucky fish. Next question. Uh, this is my seventh one of these presentations this time around. I've got about 33 to do. This slide's all about what you're going to have. So, let's see, you've got to be in Zealand Citizen, you've got to be on the electoral roll. Nominated and seconded, you've got to be in the area. So, those standing in the Māori Wood, nominated and seconded, have to be on the Māori roll. But you don't have to be in the Māori roll to be a candidate in the Māori Wood. Just the so same as non. Sorry? So, can you pick that candidate? So, to stand in the Māori Wood, you just have to be. He's on citizen on that show. You don't have to be on the Māori roll to be a candidate. Mm -hmm. Non Māori can stand in the Māori ward, no, no. just the same as Māori can stand no. in the general ward or at large. Can I ask them about the MEO, the Māori electoral option? When does that come out? And it's not, obviously it's not coming out before these elections take place. Yeah. So obviously it's going to happen after this takes yeah. place, which yeah. would have given Māori, because yeah. it's only for Māori, isn't it? Yeah. To change options, it's options yeah. on the general and the Māori roll. So why isn't that happening now before these, the uh, other elections are taking place? Good question. Yeah. Is there an answer? Not really. The Māori electoral option has always been every five years. Yeah. And so the next one I think we see in 2023, there was some talk at the end of the year as to whether was it possible to bring it forward, mm. specifically because of this. But it became too hard and it hasn't happened for whatever reason. So it is what it is. It will happen, but there is a bill going through Parliament at the moment to make it continuous. So it's not to be quite easy, you just mm -hmm. do it any old day. Yet to happen, but that could go through. Excuse me, I have just one last question. Yeah. Um, if you want to stand in for the Model World, does that mean you can get anyone in a Karoo area to, to second you? No, anyone who's on the Māori roll in Masterton District oh, Council. Okay. It's got to be within the council area, but on the Māori roll. Any yeah, questions about it? It's a bit tricky. You're can you right. talk, Laura, can you talk up a little bit, please? Sorry, sure. You... Yep. <laughs> um, council employee, if you get elected, you can stand if you're a council employee. Have to leave absence during the campaign. If elected, have to resign. Quite common, you see. Um, the current mayor of White Park District Council used to be council's regulatory and planning manager nine years ago. As the council employee stood, <coughs> in absence, got elected, resigned. <coughs> mayor. His wife is the CE's EA and has been all the time. So, good example of a conflict every three years. She makes sure she's not in the building during the voting period when her husband's up for election. Um, to make sure there's no conflict and there's no one's in a difficult situation. Those sorts of things do happen. Okay, can you change your mind to withdraw? Not really. You can withdraw your nomination up to the close of nominations. After the close of nominations, no. Unless on grounds of medical incapacity. Which did happen last time in South Wye, where we had a lady, I think, who had a stroke after she put a nomination in, uh, and then deemed that she wasn't able to be an elected member because she got elected. Went through the process, medical certificate withdrew. Can happen, doesn't happen very often. Just because you change your mind, you can't. 
It's true. Beat a few people last time. We got elected and then decided, actually, I don't really want to. <laughs> Can't withdraw. Had to run a don't vote for me campaign. Because if they got elected, resign in another election. Right. So it is what it is. 150 words, page in the handbook about it. 150 words about you and what you stand for. Not anyone else. Not giving David a hard time as a CEO. About you and your policies and what you stand for. 150 words max. Not 151, 150. We're anal about this and we read it to the end of the read and we chuck it back to you if you're more than 150 words. If you were just over, I'd probably have a crack at it and change the I am to I'm, I have to I, that sort of stuff. Ask the DC, the NDC. Try and get under 150. If I can't, I'll chuck it back to you and say, please change it, go to me for hours. Does happen. Want an electronic link? So please put into a Word document or type it into the body of the email if you're sending it through. Please don't give it to us handwritten, which means Harry and team have to retype it. Easy to make mistakes. Just endeavors. If you cock up a handwritten one, don't complain. You don't have the time to check after closing nominations if we've got it right because we're under a really tight printing deadline. I'm also not going to verify anything you put in your profile statement. If you say wondrous things about yourselves and claim you've got degrees, you don't. My problem, but your problem. I'm not going to check that. If it ends up on the front page of the paper, your problem. Once the profiles are all signed off, a couple of weeks out of closing nominations, we'll put them up on council's website and let everyone know. I have a suite of about five or six emails. Those of you candidates before seeing me do this, I send emails to candidates giving an update of the process as we go from the closing nominations through to the end of voting. So keep an eye out for those. The photo, recent photo within the last 12 months, not the photo from three years ago. Recent photo, it is not a likeness to what it is. Harriet will ask you to take it again. If you refuse, I'll have a quiet chat. If you refuse, I'll refuse to accept it. it. Has to be a recent photo that is a likeness. Not Photoshop. Not with a hat, dark sunglasses, pets, parrot, someone else. Just a hidden shoulder shot of you, take it on your iPhone. Generally, those phones will take it at 200 DPI, 300, what is that preference? 300 dots per inch DPI. Uh, it's not about the size, it's about the resolution. Don't rip off a, page, a photo off your Facebook page, just send me two DPI. Really low res when you print that. You look like a fuzzy bear. If you won't want that, we won't want that. Decent. High res photo, please. Color. Can give us a blank and white one if you really want, but everyone else will be in color. <laughs> and here's a good example. Wow. Smart looking fella. That's 10 years ago. Uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> did you say that? <laughs> Probably was it. Um, boy, in your campaign. Material, posters, flyers, all that stuff. You can use whatever photo you like. You can use your signs from three years ago. You can use your signs from six years ago. You can Photoshop your photo. No, no problems. It's just this one for your profile that I want. It's the last 12 months. You see, we've got affiliation there. Proven, dedicated, real. That's like me. And then. Yes, so you can see at the top there, my principal place of residence is in the area. And I'm also standing in the other election, if you, if you are. And then start 150 words from there. OK. 
150 in English, 150 in Thai. Either or, or both. If both, the Thai has to be substantially the same. We will check this. So don't give us two profiles that are completely different. Because we'll tell. And we'll come back and ask that. Don't worry, we'll check it. I had someone try this last time. Wow. <laughs> uh, is what it is. So that's the format. It goes out in a little DLE size booklet and it fits in the normal size envelope, two, two per page. Okay, so not like the two three words Something like that. All right, campaigning. Yep, fix. The two hundred dollar fee, is that for everything you stand for each category? Yep. So every time you stand different election, two hundred dollars. Okay. So like that guy that stood in the three councils, two hundred dollars each time, six hundred dollars. Yep. Stand for the mayor and, and the ward, two hundred dollars for mayor, two hundred dollars for the council and the trust. And the trust, two hundred dollars. Yeah, okay. Campaigning. As I said before, pretty much no rules around campaigning other than these rules. Mm -hmm. uh, no campaigning electioneering on council premises. You can't come into the council meeting, sit in the back row in the public gallery, and when David gets up to speak, stand up with a sign going, woohoo, vote for me. <laughs> we have a cat. Elected member can't turn up around the table wearing a vote for me t shirt. No electioneering or campaigning on council premises or on the council channels. Because it's live stream going out to council social media audience, not your social media audience. You can't take council social media resources, council's audience, for your benefit in your campaign. So there'll be a sign on the door saying no campaign. <laughs> Don't use council's logo or colours in your campaign. Content of your signs, content of your adverts is subject to the advertising standards authority guidelines. If you say anything that's factually incorrect, someone can take exception to it. The ASA will investigate. They have a process to do that and they'll do it real quick. Remember that any campaign material, any form of campaign material, has to have this authorization on it saying authorized by name and now. Just contact phone number, email, address if you want. It used to be you had to put a physical address in. Changed last week, no longer the case, which is great. Mm -hmm. Much easier. And small, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like tiny, tiny, tiny. Well, not tiny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you've got a billboard this size, you can have a sticky label in the corner. Yeah, cool. Just as long as. Someone complains about it, Harry can come along and hop out of a car, stand up on the sign and go, oh yeah, I can see that. Doesn't say how big or small it has to be. It just has to be there on the front. So you can now just put your name on your mobile? Yep. But, but the wording authorized by yes, yes. your name or your agent's name, could be a campaign agent. Yeah. And a mobile or email. And that changed last week. Yep. Changed on the first of July. All of it you know, came up about all that stuff about privacy and mm -hmm. sheriffs. And, you know, I don't get all that, but whatever it is, there's a few hassles where people have been worried about their public safety. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. So, not on signs. Mm -hmm. Strangely, though, you know, your details are on the electoral roll, so mm -hmm. anyone could come and have a look on the electoral roll and find it, but they had to go to some effort to do that rather than just look at a sign. Mm -hmm. Plus, they're on the website for it. But yeah, yeah. They go to the website and find yeah. the people who are there. Sorry. That's right. Sorry, I going to say something about that, those defamation rules. You know, yep. with so much hate speech thing yep. going on now, was that included in the defamation or was that just totally left out of it? And it's just, you know, I don't know. I defamation is a bit of a mission. Yeah. Right. You've, got, and, oh, you've, you've got to have a case that's pretty strong to push defamation. Right. Can, can be done. Yeah. Takes time, takes a few dollars. Mm -hmm. It's not something you want to do lightly. Mm -hmm. 
but does it. Okay. Social media, shades of grey, pretty messy this stuff. Um, <coughs> key thing is the council's social media channels are not to be used for electioneering. So the comms team are onto this. They check posts, take them down, and people make comments about candidates, and will block people if they continue to do. I had a council yesterday who blocked three people for making a whole lot of spurious comments on their social media channel about the mayor and other elected members. It does happen. It's a question, sorry. So if I've got a campaigning Facebook page and my own personal Facebook page that I am friends of NTC, et cetera, et cetera, are they two separate identities or I have to remove myself from all as a personal versus the candidate? No, it doesn't matter. There's Stella Linux and then there's Stella Linux the council. But the Stella Linux the council is not allowed to obviously interact, interact with council bits, but Stella Linux as a member of the public just uh, hanging at the skate park. Shades of grey. Okay. Because we could argue that you as an individual banning <coughs> social media, not as a candidate to raise your profile, is okay. in fact doing it as a candidate. So, mm. no, not. No. common sense would prevail, mm. but the election is sometimes common sense goes out the window big time. But these things are the things that you shouldn't do in the social media space along those lines. Because doing all those things and goes on council's social media channel, which is not your social media channel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can I ask a question? Yeah. The, the yeah. Line, yeah. Line, yeah. 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 If you're a current councillor and we have a tendency to share yeah. council posts, yeah. um, what's the story with that? No problem. So, so, so the same thing for anyone. You can take. You know, like dog yeah. registration. You, you can take council's posts. And send them out to your audience. No, can't problem. Jump onto the no problem at all. You can't jump onto their audience. Okay. So you can take those posts, you can send them out with a campaign message if you want. You just can't do that stuff. You can say council is also. Okay, gotcha. so we can't upstage a council, basically. That's right. In a nutshell. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Common sense. You would think. Mm. Yeah. It's great. But Matt and his team are wrong with this. <laughs> And um, I'll shut it down, or they'll sing out to me, and we'll have a chat pretty quick go over the line. Please don't take your completed voting paper at home, tick next to your name, take a photo, and put it on your Facebook page. That is against the act. It's illegal. I'll shut it down real quick. It's an offense if someone complained about it in writing. All I can do is bust police. None of us want to go down that path. So please don't take the photo of your voting vote completed. Put it on your website. Signs, my favorite topic. So we talked about before. <laughs> uh, luckily for you, signs can go up tomorrow if you really want. Um, and note the location change from three years ago. And the handbook sets out all of this about where they can go and where they can't go. Can be on private land, same deal, three months. Unsigned per site. NZTA, super anal about state highways. They take those prisoners. They take signs down real quick. Mm -hmm. So don't put your sign up on a state highway unless you comply with the rules, please. Otherwise, the sign probably won't be there too long. And strange but true, the cost of the framing, the wood that holds up your sign, the rebuilding step, is 
Mind you, I would not an election expense. Talk about someone. So therefore, there's no reason why you should scrimp and save on the wood that holds your sign up that gets blown over in the wind all the time. Make sure you put it up with decent wood so that it stays up. Because it doesn't matter, it's not part of your expense returns when you don't have to record that money. Can I just ask, um, why, why the signs are not permitted on Little Street and Amatar Road anymore? That's um, we've had the subdivision there on the corner, yeah. and now that's a stormwater system. Yeah. So we don't want you breaking the stormwater system. Mm -hmm. I've got a sign. That was a bad spot anyway. Yeah. 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 Probably basically painted on or a bit smashed before it's going on. It's a bad spot. Okay, any other questions about that? Right, let's get away from science because we can. <laughs> okay, so donations and expenses. So you've got to record your campaign expenditure for the three month period, late July to the 8th of October. You also have to record any donations that you receive, any and all donations, no matter when you receive them. Someone gave you a donation last year and said, this is for your campaign next year. You have to record that. If you're doing a meat raffle or something like that, or a movie night, technically, you have to record all the people that might spend you know, 30, 20 dollars on the items that make up the total. Painful, make sure people are aware of that. Your name's going to be in the public record. Places like Give a Little, Ridge Mean, those guys, they don't comply with the legislation around the declaration of who the, donate, the donors are, so they don't provide services to candidates. Because you have to declare whoever is giving you the donation. You get an anonymous donation? How could you get an anonymous donation these days? Hmm. Maybe a brown paper envelope in your letterbox in the middle of the night that someone put in there that you didn't see, but your camera at the front door didn't record. Maybe. But if someone's doing that, then please let me know. Yeah. Um, <coughs> and if you do get an anonymous donation, if it's over $1,500, you're going to give it down to the council. Just because someone says to you, here's the donation, I want to be anonymous, it isn't. No good is where you can work it out, you have to record it. It also means you don't have to accept the donation. Because, of course, the moment you do, it's on public record. Your many elected members recent times have been caught out by receiving an apparently innocuous donation of a few hundred dollars put on their return, then that person has turned out to be a property developer who's brought an item to council, council to consider, for which that person, the elected member, then can't partake in the discussion because they've got a conflict. Not a good place to be. Be mindful of any donations you receive and what catch might be. Those are the maximum amounts you can spend on your campaign based on the population of each area. Not electoral populations, there's a lot of different. Money board being less because the population of the money board. Well, maximum amount including GST. Now, this is campaign expenditure between the 8th of July and the 8th of October. It doesn't matter when you paid for it, it's when the activity occurs. But you could have, if you were smart, put a full page ad in the Wire of the Times Age today, and seven, break your colour ad outside for three months, not part of the <coughs> campaign expenditure or that limit. Tomorrow, it is. I said before, um, three month period, 
get you the puzzle back. The thing can't be guys on the back. No, man, that's better. If you've had a website done, it's been up for a month already, up for four months. That goes to the end of the election period of the election period, three months, four months, you pro rata to record in the expense three quarters of the cost. Whether it's someone does a website for you as a mate, it's okay. You've got to record that at the going market rate. You do it yourself, it doesn't matter. Really. Few things about offences. We're going to be the end here. Um, about ten minutes ago. You can have a coffee with someone at the cafe, talk about the campaign and how great you are. But you can't say, "My shout if you vote for me." That's treated. Can't be down the pub with your mates and say, "I'll oh, get this round." All good, I got it. If you guys vote for me, that's against that. And don't worry, we hear about this because we are contributed to the dollars at times. And I hear about this sort of stuff. People contact me or like if the council know, we will hear about it. I will contact you. You don't want that. So a campaign meeting yep. launch. Yep. With refreshments afterwards. Yep. Great. That's no problem. Tea and bickies afterwards. Excellent. No alcohol. No booze. No booze. Can you see that? Food? No, no food. No, it's okay. Like a little square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no booze. No booze. Strange picture. Strange picture. Strange. No booze. Good for the drink. Oh, Specifically mentioned in the act. No alcohol. Because it's seen to be something of bad. Mm -hmm. Remember, this is the act was written in 2001, previously based on legislation from 1976, before the days of the internet. Um, so you can't give away your pen, pad, fridge magnet, because that's bribery. It's an item of value. Nothing else. Please don't go there, because we'll have to pass it to the police. None of us want to get in it, but any questions about anything else? <clears throat> Here's a few signs of good things and bad things. Um, so this one here, it doesn't work on me, is it? So here's a good sign. Do a circle with a tip next to your name. Little authorization authorized by you can't have that sign where you've got the <laughs> other candidates and nothing next to them or across because that's an imitation of voting paper. You're instructing people on how to vote against the legislation. But the candidate did this in Cup 2004, STV, the one next to his name, and then nothing next to others. Lots of complaints went to the police, got prosecuted. Can get elected and go very well. Please don't go there. <coughs> Mayor Michael, Horror Federal District Council last time. Michael Fain standing again, sign read his car, authorized on the back, no problems, all good. What's wrong with that? Where is he parked? Outside the council. Right outside the council building in the council car. No, Michael, you can't put that there. Park it down the road in the public car park that anybody could use. Sure, not the council car park with the logo right behind the car. Can I just ask something for your verification? There's quite a bit of debate about the existing town hall. And um, so I think it's important that candidates know they can't get a profile picture of themselves outside the existing town hall. Existing town hall would be a council resource, council yeah. building. But some Correct. people. It's a election yeah, point. Yes, yes. So, so you can't take you can't take a photo and use it in your own campaign. Yeah, that's what but I'm and this, this has happened the last couple of days. If someone, if the local paper 
here to do the story of value. And have to take it outside the county. Okay. That's not part of the election. It's not part of the election. It's not part of your campaign. It's the papers here to do it. You. So if you had a personal Facebook page and, for example, you didn't do any campaign or if there was a photo of you on there in front of the existing town hall, that would be a grey area, wouldn't it? That's great. Right. Mm -hmm. Is there a call to action in there? Yeah. I have a question, just some good point that you brought up. If the newspaper decided to do a piece on someone who's standing at the council, they interview that person, that person starts using their slogans, part of that interview that gets published is that considered election using which slogan? Their whatever their individual Goodbye. slogan is. Yeah, media interviews like that, media stories that that are, that, that are not part of the paid campaign. Okay. It's no drama. Yeah, you know, it's a bit like it's a bit like all the stuff about Paul Legal at the moment. Is that campaign? No. It's just media noise. Media report. Cool, thank you. Most most local reporters are pretty good about this. They know what is and what isn't. Um, so don't worry too much about that. We've got to be practical about it. Here's Ray the guy, Hut City. Some of you might know this guy. Uh, photo of a man holding a sign. So there he is. Over here, sign of the man holding the sign. Quite clever, got a lead. And he doesn't remember that. Do <laughs> uh, my best, but I can't promise anything. <coughs> Mark was not a candidate. Oh, okay. Uh, he was just some guy who <laughs> put a sign up on the first day. <laughs> he felt like <laughs> And everyone loved it, it went viral, it was all over the news. The council did not take it down because they went, that's entertainment. <laughs> yeah, he was interviewed. He's not a candidate. Well, it's not authorized. Not a candidate. Doesn't matter. <laughs> First day of voting, <laughs> this sign goes up. <laughs> How long do you think it was that for? <laughs> Council took it down after about 30 minutes. As soon as they could get there. <laughs> Bit offensive, but you'll never sense again at that. <laughs> All right, we're nearly in. Just talking about some compliance stuff. Um, the election rolls, which come out next week, three and roll. Hard copy includes the uh, Marty Ward entitlement. So <coughs> not separate part of it, but we'll get it. You can purchase a copy of it, hard copy. Can't get it out of time. the legislation. <coughs> then we have the final roll after the 12th of August that we use to send the voting pages out for things you got a month to change your address if you've got them to change it. <coughs> if you plenty of people like that, please go and update your address before then. Otherwise, the voting papers would want to get. Okay. And then, as a result, if your voting paper doesn't get to you, you got your address wrong, you can come into the council office, fill an application form, do a special vote during a three week voting period. Not any different, not any other. If you're going overseas for the whole voting period, can change your address, the overseas address. But depends on where you're going as to whether that'll have enough time to get to you in time for you to fill it and give it back to us by the 8th of October. So unless you're probably going to Australia or the Pacific Islands, unlikely. Postal voting only, can't scan an email, can't take a photo of it. We'd love you to, but can't. Hence the legislation. So, you lose it, dog eats it, you did get in the best place. Come and do it. <coughs> in the results, pretty straightforward this stuff. Uh, publicly announced probably three o'clock on election day. We'll go to the council before then. 
David and Harry can, and their team will hop on the phone and ring everyone. Is that okay? Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. 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 Everyone will get a phone call. Uh, before the results. Before it goes on the website. Yep. And then the prelim result the next day and find a few days later. Now, this time, we've, we've done a bit of work to try and make it easier for people to find where to put their completed voting papers. So what do you have to do at the moment? Put it in the post box. Who knows where the post box is at? Hard to find. He's on post, done a good job with taking them away. <laughs> so this time we have an initiative to provide councillors with bright orange wee bits. Same as you <coughs> just done at home, 120 litres, but bright red cone orange. With a slot with off chain on. Councillors have taken that up. Can't remember how many you guys have. Fine. So um, Harriet's going to put those around the district in different places so that it's easy for people to get easier for people to get them to. Maybe nine or ten supermarkets. Yeah. Then we've now we haven't sort that location yet, but somewhere where they're a bit more visible and easier to get to. We'll do a PR campaign around that to make it easy. Now remember you can you can put it you can put it in anyone. The uh, same in Cardiff and South Wyoming, train station in Wellington. We'll go to the same place, come back to us, so it doesn't matter where they go and just find them. So when will they go out? For the entire voting period, the voting opens 16th of September. Okay, so. Yeah, it's three weeks, whatever. Yeah, for the three week voting period. Okay. Monitored, secure. Played regularly. Hopefully, easier to do the one. After we produce the result, David then kicks in and sends out a notice for the inaugural council meeting. Seven days later, ceremony is swear on the elected members. What a big deal! But a pomp and ceremony, great to be a part of. Important. Occasion, friends and family can come on. And there's all the documents we talked about, most of them are over there. Councils Davis Wondrous pre election report in a couple of weeks. A couple of councils website. A few guys already know what's in it, so we're ahead of the game. And that's the last line. Thank you very much for coming along. Appreciate the time. Uh, great bunch of questions. Um, please, if you've got any questions now, then you know, let's have a chat. Come and talk to me afterwards. Good luck. And hopefully, I haven't confused you all with too much information, but it is what it is. Yeah, we're we'll good to go. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Right. Oh, <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry